Hello, dear writer. Ready to outline a novel? Welcome to the second episode of my writing a book series. In the first episode, I shared with you how I brainstorm a novel, how I take an idea and turn it into a story. And in this video, I want to share with you how I outline, which is the second step in my writing a novel process. So I actually like outlining while brainstorming and this is because I never really stop brainstorming even as I draft. I'm always coming up with new ideas and having to adjust things around those ideas. Uh, but nevertheless, I do have a process that I follow loosely every time I outline a novel. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. Without further ado, let's get outlining. Step 1. I figure out the main beats. I've developed my outlining process around the Save the Cat beat sheet, but I enjoy straying away from it and I use the structure not as a bible but as a guide which I sometimes choose not to listen to. I believe that, in order to outline a novel effectively, writers must be well aware of story structure, which means not just one structure, like the three-act one, but many structures, as well as different types of beats. Being clear about the point of a beat allows me to focus better on the story itself. Nevertheless, my outlining process always starts with me picking up Save the Cat Writes a Novel and writing down the main beats on my notebook. There are five main beats according to STC. Catalyst, Break into Two, Midpoint, All is Lost, and Break into Three. From my brainstorming sessions before I start outlining, I usually already have most of the beats in my mind. However, that's not always the case, and this time I only had the catalyst where something happens to the MC that forces them to move away from Act 1 world, and the midpoint where the MC false succeeds or false fails to achieve their external goal. When I don't have all the beats figured out yet, I like to do research on the ones missing, both from STC and from other books, as well as the internet, just to refresh my mind and to get my brain going. Since my current project has multiple POVs, it really helps to do this exercise for each of the POVs. A lot of them intersect and build on each other, which is always nice to witness, and it never ceases to surprise me when the story starts taking shape in my mind that way. You can see there are clearly beats that I haven't figured out yet, so I'm gonna do a little bit of brainstorming and just try to figure them out. I really like doing this for each POV because it just makes the story so much more complex and it always surprises me how many things I can come up with and how much complexity each character brings into the story. It feels very organic and very satisfying. Step 2. I attempt to tell the story to someone else. This someone else is usually my critique partner, but if you don't have one, you can pretend. Telling the story to someone else forces you to fill in plot holes and gaps and make them as exciting as you can. 
It really helps me come up with reasons for things and backstory that I might not have been so sure about. I write the title, the genre, and create a simple but effective mood board. Then I explain the world, and the current situation, and then the characters involved. Step 3. I collect scene ideas. There's a rule I always follow when trying to come up with scenes and to develop scenes and I learned it from Susan Dennard. Seriously, go check out our website, it's a gem. But the rule I'm talking about is all scenes must be magical cookies. I even copied down the meaning of magical cookies from her post. A magical cookie is a scene or snippet or relationship or feelings that make you want to write a story. And so here's what I did. I picked up the list of scenes I had written down while brainstorming and checked where in the story they might fit. Whenever I was out of ideas, I did this. 1. I thought of my favorite books in the genre I'm writing and listed some of the things I loved about them. 2. I did research on both the theme and the different elements of my story's aesthetic. 3. I wrote down all of the questions in my mind and slowly tried to find answers for them. Hint hint, not all of those answers came to me immediately, some of them are still unanswered, but that's okay at this stage. Step 4. I list all of the ideas I have and organize them. But first, a side note. From studying Save the Cat, I've come up with a template for my outline which allows me to work scene by scene. I always start with 56 scenes, which I then adjust according to the project I'm working on. By doing this, I can control my scene length the time it takes me to write them, etc. So, here's what I know. In general, Act 1 takes about 20-25% to of the story, going with 25 in a total of 80k words, which is what I'm striving towards for a first draft. That would be 20k words, approximately 14 1.5k word scenes. Act 2 takes about 50% of the story, so in a total of 80k words, that would be 40k words, approximately 28 1.5k word scenes. 
Act 3 takes about 25% of the story. So just like Act 1, in a total of 80k words, that would be 20k words, approximately 14 1.5k word scenes. This is really helpful if you're doing NaNoWriMo or plan to draft a novel in a month because you can divide Act 2 by the midpoint and your goal will be to write 14 scenes per week, 2 scenes per day. Pretty neat, right? Give this video a like if you found this useful. With this knowledge, I started writing down my scenes and exploring smaller beats. I first write the scenes, then organize them with numbers. But all of Act 1's scenes came to me in the right order, which is not surprising because Act 1 is usually the easiest and most clear to me. Act 2A, on the other hand, suffered from too many scenes syndrome. I believe this was because I have 4 POVs and I naturally need to add more scenes, but I also realized that I could join multiple ideas into one intense and complex scene, and that made me very happy. I ended up with really relevant scenes that not only moved the story forward, but also provide atmosphere and character development. Needless to say, going from Act 1 to Act 3 took me days and could have taken me weeks if I hadn't given myself a deadline. Once I reached the end, I still had some empty space which needed to be filled in between beats. I named these scenes Something Something. In order to fill them out, I referred to the magical cookies I had written down in my brainstorming process as well as more writing prompts which I searched for online. Step 5. I detail each scene. Now that I knew exactly what would happen in each scene, I had to come up with the how. This is where I moved to my Scrivener file. Sometimes I do it earlier, sometimes later, but this felt like the right time to start filling in my outline document. I had to fix the number of scenes first, and then, the real work started. I knew I wouldn't be able to come up with a how for all of the scenes, but I decided I was okay with that. Still, I wanted to have as little confusion as possible during the drafting stage, so I brainstormed as many scenes as I could. So, what is the how? Where are the characters? What are the characters doing? How is each character feeling? What is the overall mood? Etc, etc, etc. Basically, it's the specifics, as specific as I can get. I hope that by the end of this video or by the end of your outline you are feeling excited to start the zero draft or the first draft in case you don't do a zero draft but I do and that's the next step if you enjoyed this video please let me know I worked really hard to put it together and I'll see you in my next one